teachers and students. Uh, my name is Christopher Laban. I'm the founding director of the Educator Collaborative, and I'm here with my friend Roz. Roz Linder. Um, I'm with Educator Collaborative as well, and you guys know me, a lot of you, because I've worked in your schools with your teachers, and we're really excited to be here. Um, both of us write books that help teachers teach kids. Um, one of mine right here, which some of you already know about, because some of you might be in here, is Big Book of Details. So we're really excited to talk with you guys today. And uh, one of my books that some of you or your teachers might know is Falling in Love with Close Reading. And uh, whether you are one of the schools that's going to join us at the NCTE annual convention this year in Atlanta, or you're just joining this video because you'd like to do this advocacy project with your students, we're um, so happy to have you and students to have you here too. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing today. Uh, Roz and I, uh, from the theme for this year's Teachers Conference Convention, um, the theme is advocacy. We've put together a session and this project for middle school students to advocate for themselves. Advocacy means something that you believe in and you want to stand up for. So a cause that you care about, um, something that you want to let people know or engage people in doing with you as well. Like maybe you advocate for recycling, for example. So you try to get other people to know and uh, know about it and recycle as well. So what we've created for you is this guide, and it's not a worksheet. Um, instead, it's, in fact, we didn't give you enough space to even write to use it like a worksheet. Instead, it's just a guide for three big steps that Roz and I are going to demonstrate right now for this advocacy project. And up front, the steps are you'll find a topic. You then will do some pre-writing to reflect on your experiences and make some decisions about what, what you'd like to do. And then the last step for this project is to create advocacy questions. Our goal with this project is that you leave with not necessarily like an essay or a long piece of writing, but instead leave with some questions that you could use in a conversation with teachers to help teachers think about the things that you care about as a middle school student and to invite them to do some problem solving with you. Uh, because we know that as middle school students, you know what works. You know what works for your learning. You know what works for you and your school. And so this project can help you and your classmates advocate for those things that you'd like teachers to do for everyone. Um so we'll get started with the first step. Um, and Roz and I are, I'm going to write uh, using paper and a pen. Roz is going to use her computer screen because we know you all write in different ways. Um, so if you have the sheet at that uh, teachers will put a link for you that you can grab it as well too. Um, our first step is to find a topic to advocate for, to find something that we as uh, middle school students care about and want teachers to know about too. So here's what, what I would do if I were finding a topic. Um, I'd look across these different options, or you could of course create your own too, um, but I'll look across these options and we've given you some questions, not that you have to answer all of them, but just to help you think about, is this something that I care about, something that I want to do yeah. too? I'm going to ask myself two questions. I'm going to ask myself, do I have experience with this? And is this something I really care about? Um, so let's see, bullying, do I have experience with that? Uh, yes, uh, when I was in seventh grade, uh, I, I was bullied. I was bullied for a, a large part of the school year by uh, one kid in particular, a few of his friends, so I do have experience. Do I care about that? Yes, I don't want other students to be bullied. Um, books, yeah, I like to read. I, I, I mean, I care about books, but I don't know if there's much I want to say about it. Technology, I love technology. Um, I do think more kids should have more access to it. So maybe I want to talk about that. Teaching, I'm not really sure what what that means. So let me look at the questions. Uh, what should teachers change about how they teach reading and writing? What do your favorite teachers do that more should be doing? How should the classroom be set up? What, oh, okay. All those are interesting. So yeah, I could see that. Like I, I can think of things that some of my favorite teachers do. And actually I can think of things that, you know, I wish that there were a lot of things different in some classrooms that, that I've been in. Um, I wish it was a lot more comfortable for one. So, so yeah, I could probably say something there. So I'm, I'm going to go through this list and find some options. I might say like, well, I'm not going to talk about that. Maybe this, maybe this. But then your goal is to pick one and to really think about like for me, I want to pick the one that I really have experience with and I know I could say a lot about. I feel really passionate about it. It's something I really want to advocate for. So I think from everything on this list, I, I you know, there's some things that, that I really want to talk about. There's others not so much, but the one I feel the you know the most connected to that I want to advocate for the most is bullying. So I'm going to put a big check mark there. 
Um, so that's my topic. Uh, Raj, what's yours? I looked at this and sometimes this happens where a topic just jumps out at you. As soon as I saw bullying, I thought, yeah. But then when I got to books, I said, oh, yes. I know I want to talk about books. I read that first question after, I think it was, I have my sheet in front of me here. It says, what books should schools have that they don't? Immediately I knew that was the topic that I wanted. And I looked at the rest of those questions there and I said, this is speaking to me. This is something that matters to me. And it immediately drew me back to when I was younger. Books were always an issue there. They were not the kind of books that I was looking for. So when I picked my topic, I was really, my topic basically picked me. So books became what I decided to focus on. So that's my approach to how I handled my topic. And because I was so excited with it, I went directly into the next section at the bottom that you're showing that says pre-write. And I want you guys to take a minute and look at this. This part is really to get your thinking going. This is not meant to be um, a bunch of essay starters or paragraph starters, but for me, it really worked and it let me really think through my experiences with limited book choices in our school that met the needs of what I was really looking for. So I'm going to show you what I did really quickly. I took my topic and I wrote down book choices. And what I did was I took those starters from the sheet and I just listed them here. That's what you see here. And I just kind of free wrote. So the first one says my experiences with this topic. So I just thought, okay, how do I feel? And the first thing that came to mind was that it has been frustrating. And I kind of looked at that. And I said, okay, what do I mean by frustrating? What really matters to me? And I put down that I want books that have characters like me. And then I had to step back and say, what does that mean? I really want to think this through and make sure that I'm really thinking about my experiences, what has actually happened. And so I thought about different things that I have been through different um, stories that I've told people before. So I'm going to write more, but initially I went to that next one. It says one time. And I thought about an experience I had one time. I um, talked with my teacher to see if there were more books about girls or black girls like me. My teacher gave me a lot of books. I remember this so vividly. It's like it happened yesterday. My teacher gave me a bunch of books. But guess what? Those characters, all of them, but all of the characters were in slavery times. And it kind of bummed me out a little bit because I know that's history, but I wanted to read about a girl like me, a regular girl that experienced things. So I hunted and hunted and hunted. So I go here and I thought about what I did next. So the only thing from the sheet that we had was the word then. I love that because it lets me think about my experiences. So then I began searching everywhere. And we didn't have Google, so that meant I had to have my mom take me to the libraries. And I spent a lot of time looking for books with girls like me. And so when I look at these, these experiences really helped me. And then I got to that, the second from the last prompt that says what I wish more teachers would do. And I'm gonna be honest with you, at first, this is what I had, a bunch of question marks. I really didn't know what to put there. And that's fine, you're probably gonna experience that too. So I kind of reflected on my experiences, what that meant, and what I thought a teacher could have done to make this better. And so I left the question mark there for a little bit, and then I thought about why does this matter? And it really resonated with me, it really stood out to me because I bet there are girls like me today that are looking to see themselves, and maybe not just girls, but I think everybody wants to see themselves somewhere. So for why does it matter, I really started with that. I said that everyone should feel like they matter in books and in life. 
And then I kind of just reflected on this and I really came back to what I wish teachers would do a bit later. And I stretched out what I wished a perfect teacher would have done. And I finally decided that I wish that more teachers would look at their classes and try to get books that feature everyone. And so this is my process, and this is my rough draft you're looking at here. And it's not a rough draft, like, oh, I have to turn a fancy essay in, but this was the beginning of my thinking. And I ended up kind of taking this and stretching it out a little bit more. And at the end, after I got done with all of that, before I even thought about the second part with the questions, I had a pretty lengthy one that I edited a bit. And I'm going to show you what that looked like in the end. So this is what I ended up with. I took my thinking, I stretched it out, and it gave me something to start thinking about what kind of questions I would wanna ask teachers to get them involved in this conversation so that they could really help me and I could really be an advocate for book choice. So that's my process that I follow. And then the next step will be coming up with the questions. Chris, I know you probably handled that process differently than I did. You wanna yeah, talk a little bit about sure. that? Sure, I really liked your saying suggestion of if you're not sure what teachers should do do some more thinking about you first like like say well why does this matter what what are things that that i wish would happen differently and then move over to to teachers um so i when i'm uh handwriting here um i i started a similar process to you i found the prompts really helpful to begin with um so here are mine i mentioned experience with bullying i was bullied in seventh grade one thing that can be helpful as you're doing this uh like Ross was showing us, is using prompts like one time or then helps you to not just think about a category or a big time, but to really go back in time to a specific moment or specific time that something happened. So when I was in seventh grade, one time, then it, it just came to mind for me. I was in the art room. Um, this kid, Joe, had, had been bullying me through almost the start of seventh grade. That's when middle school started for me. The start of seventh grade, this was now a couple months into school. We're in the art room. He was assigned a seat right across from me, but no one knew that he bullied me. Like no adult knew, no teacher knew, even though he bothered me almost every day. And on that particular day, he did something mean to me. And so what happened was I actually, I had enough. I normally never said anything, but all I could get out was tears. I got up, I, I went to the front of the room. I had never done that before. I told my art teacher, but then here's the thing that got me. I told her she did get him in trouble. Like she did say, you know, Joe, come over here. She, I talked to him, I think he had to leave the room, but then the bullying didn't stop. That, that one time that I said something, one thing that she did, she never asked about it again. The art teacher, I never talked about it again, and the bullying continued for almost the whole rest of the year. So then when I got to these parts, um, I, I guess, first of all, I like that idea of starting with what matters first. So maybe I could start here and think like, why does it matter that teachers are more involved and that they try to do more? For me, what's, help, what's gonna help me think about the what I wish more teachers did is I think I'm gonna stay in this moment and say to myself, well, what do I wish that my art teacher had done? I'm gonna have someone particular in mind. And sometimes having a particular person helps me uh, to brainstorm more and to come up with more ideas. So what do I wish the teacher would do? Ross was typing in paragraphs. I sometimes like to just bullet ideas first. So I'm gonna do that. Um, well, I wish my art teacher had uh, followed up with me once I reported that he was bothering me, I wish he had asked me the next day or a couple days later or whenever, like, is this still happening to you? Um, I wish that she had maybe, I mean, I don't, I don't know if this would work, but had given me, uh, you know, like kind of silent ways to let her know. So I didn't always have to, I felt so embarrassed walking up across the entire room, up to the front of the art room, crying. I tried to keep my, my voice quiet, but tears were coming out. I felt so embarrassed. I, Maybe she could have given me like a silent way to give her a cue of like, I don't feel comfortable right now or something's happening. I wish that she had changed our seats and, and she didn't. And again, I don't think that she's a bad person. I think she didn't really know what was going on or kind of have steps like this. So by thinking about my art teacher that's giving me some ideas, I realized that what I could do is think of other one times. So I, I could go back here and say, well, I, you know, I remember that time in our health class um, when, when we had to, you know, do a project about ourselves and the things that we like and we care about and he made fun of me and that, and what do I wish the health teacher would do? And then that could help me do the last part like Roz did. Like, so why does that matter to other kids or, or why does that matter to, to teachers and schools?
So then, as Roz mentioned, our last step, and the big one, is then to create advocacy questions. So then to, to not necessarily write an essay right now, but really to say, so what do you want to then ask teachers to get them involved? And, and our, our thinking here is that when you advocate for something, one way to do it is to just stand up and say, here's why recycling is important, and here's why you should do it, and here's all the reasons. But sometimes that's just talking at people. That's just telling people what you think and hoping that they understand it. Another way to advocate is to create really smart, thoughtful, we call them challenging questions. Questions that make someone kind of have to pause for a minute or kind of think, hmm, why, why do I do that? Or well, maybe I've never thought of it that way. And to get in a conversation, having a, a well, trying to advocate for something and then talking about it with other people that may or may not agree with you oftentimes can help to advocate, to get people to understand your point of view and maybe even follow you more than just talking at them about it. Um, so what Roz and I would like to show for creating advocacy questions is you could brainstorm, but sometimes it's hard to come up with really good questions. So one thing you can do is to partner up with someone, we're gonna partner up now, and to just talk through how you're coming up with them and what they are. And as partners, challenge each other. Say like, well, that, that maybe you could word that differently, or I don't understand what you're saying, could you make that clearer? Um, so we're, we're going to try this out right now. We haven't practiced this. We're going to try it out live for you. Um, so should we, we could take either topic. Do you want to maybe start, start with yours? Oh, I will. I think that'll be cool. Okay. So what I did was, I, because this was so emotional for me, um, it was kind of challenging because I want the teachers to talk about it. But I realized because some of these things may feel uncomfortable, I think you mentioned, Chris, when you were writing, like, I don't blame my teacher, right. but I wish she had known this. So I think it's good to start with the mindset when you're writing your questions that they are challenging. They may feel a little uncomfortable. So one of the first questions that I was thinking about since we were talking about books and not having um, a lot of books that represented to me other cultures and races and genders, um, I did a little count one time and I realized that most of the books had older white men. So I want teachers to talk about that. Like, I want to know, do they know that? Yeah. Do they care about it? But I don't want to seem rude. So I want you to think we're not trying to be rude, but we want questions that can get them thinking. So I thought initially, should I ask them maybe, what do they think about their current libraries? Like, do they feel that school libraries and class libraries represent different cultures and races equally? And I, I, I like that question, Chris, but I wasn't sure if the do you feel part was problematic because I remember the sheet set that it should be something that stimulated a conversation. Right. So I was a little worried with saying, do you feel that libraries represent different cultures, races, and genders that a teacher might just say yes? Yeah, you're right. Like no. Just say like, no, and then be done. Well, you know, there's two things as your partner, there's two things that I'm thinking. One is I think you have an excellent point of you, you want to be respectful in this conversation too, because when you're respectful, that helps the other person open up more. So I wonder if, just another question to add before that one is who decides what books are in our classroom? You know, like, Ooh, who, like gets, that. who gets the books? Where do they come from? So that way, if, if the teacher says, I don't have any say, the school gets them all. That's a different conversation than I pick all of them myself. You know, like then you can say, hmm, then how do you think the school, you know, then you could, you kind of know where they come from and that could help you. And then you're I right. I like you, that. And then you're right. You don't just want to. You don't want a question they can just say yes or no to. Can you say the one one more time? You said, do you feel? Do you feel that school and classroom libraries represent different cultures, races, and genders equally? I mean, I wonder if it's good to make a statement followed by, like almost to say, I don't, you know, I, I want to let you know, I don't think that our library does this, this, and this. Do you agree with me? I like that. I like that. And you know what, too, might be a good idea, even though we're coming up with maybe five questions, if some of them kind of had a natural follow up. Like, I don't think that libraries represent, you know, gender and race and culture equally. Um, how do you feel about that? I like the how, because I yeah. think it gets that whole, you have to tell me. Because do you agree? Still does give them a chance to go, yeah, I yes, totally agree. Yeah, with you. Done. yeah, so maybe if it's some how questions, it's like, how do you decide what books go in our library? Or, or yes. like a what question of like, what do you look for when you pick books that we have in our library? Or what does the school look for? 
Okay, so you're giving me really good feedback. I think this is good doing a partner thing. I think what I might want to do is kind of have a bank of words that kind of help stimulate discussion. Like, you know, you mentioned using how or, you know, share or explain. Like, I think those might be good for me to think about for the beginnings of my questions versus do you think this or do you not? Right, that, that kind of thing. So. Yes or no. so can we could we try that a bit with my topic? Yes. Okay. So so remember, as you're doing this with a partner, um, you want to do just what Roz and I are doing, where you listen for things that can help make questions more challenging. Um, like Roz was suggesting, you want to listen for questions that have a long answer, not just a short one. Um, and you want to listen for questions that, that you know, respectfully engage the teachers or, or others that you're talking with. Um, okay, so mine's around bullying. I, I, like I said, I, I don't think the teachers are bad people that, that were letting this happen around me, I, but I, I didn't feel comfortable to talk. I, you know, I want to get teachers to, to ask more, I guess, or like be more involved when kids raise, raise a question. Um, but I, you know, I'm stuck on, on what, cause I don't think asking the question of like, do you care that kids are bullied? I think <laughs> yeah. teachers care. <laughs> well, maybe think about the same kind of conversation we had with my questions, the beginning of the sentence, like maybe it needs to be something like how, you know, how do you handle bullying? Like maybe to just get them talking a little bit about your topic. And then maybe we kind of ramp it up a little more to get into specifics, but maybe just find it out. Cause I imagine if I'm interviewing a few teachers and I say, how do you handle bullying in your class or in your school? Like that's going to be a rich conversation right there. And then yeah. maybe we can dig deeper, you and, know, as and, we move on. And I like what you said of maybe we think about ramping it up. Like I let, let me just put my paper back up here because that just gave me an idea that I might want to think what are the like easier to approach questions and then what are ones that become more challenging. So I kind of have like the like, easier and then challenging. Oh, that's really good. And so like you said, like how do you deal with bullying? Because I imagine they'll, they'll have a lot of answers like, oh, I, you know, we have a bullying prevention program. We have a this, we have a that. And so there may be some others. But then to be a little more challenging, maybe I could make a statement then. So, so I could say like, um, well, even though those things are in place, I have to let you know I was bullied a lot and no one ever did anything about it. And I think part of it is I was too scared to talk, to talk about mm. it. And then I could ask another question. How do you think we help students who are afraid to say more? Oh, that's really good. That's really good. So I think that, yeah, it starts off really well. They get to say what they're doing. And then a more challenging one is kind of asking them to stretch a little further. Yeah, like, I you know, this is what you, I like the statement and then challenging them to go a little bit further. And I like how you did the statement as a follow up question closer to the harder, challenging side. I think it's good to just maybe not even say anything in the beginning about how you feel, just kind of have an original question, like, how do you approach this? And yeah. then as it gets more complex, I think we can have more statements paired with questions and kind of dig a little deeper, but yeah, that, not feel uh, like we're attacking them. Right. That makes a lot of sense with yours too, of that, that maybe mm -hmm. instead of doing like, I don't think libraries are, you start out with, like you said, can you how do you share? Yes. Yeah. And then, and then you add, well, one thing I want you to know, is that my experience is, and then you ask another question. I like that. I'm jotting this down. Just so now that we have found a topic to advocate for, we've done some pre-writing to help us think about our own experiences with it, and then think, you know, so what do we wish teachers could do? We came to that last step of creating some advocacy questions, statements, uh, we hopefully helped you, I know we helped each other to think through even some levels of start out really respectful and helpful, then become a little more challenging and thoughtful with your questions as you go. So now that leaves you with what do you do? So when you advocate for something, one of the most important things that, that we know to do and that Roz and I have learned from a lot of smart people that we work with is that advocacy is about action. It's not just about you know writing down some questions and then sitting and doing nothing with them. Instead, it's yes. about really doing something with them. So here are some ideas of ways that you could advocate. So for example, um, some students that are watching this video are actually going to join Raz and I in a special session at NCTE's annual convention this November. At that session, these students will do something that actually any of you could do at your school. 
we're going to have round table sessions. So that means it's a bunch of tables in a room that teachers are invited to sit down at and students will lead the conversation. So we're creating a table for bullying, a table for technology, all of those things on the list, there'll be a table for that. And students will start with their questions to talk with teachers. Now you could do the same thing at your school too. You could, during a faculty meeting time, a bunch of students could create round tables and you could really have these, these challenging conversations with teachers that ultimately will help to make your school a better place for everyone. Once you've had these thoughts, you've gone through this process, a smart thing to do is share this with an adult at your school because a lot of times adults can really help you find a forum that works really well. They can help you figure out some next steps that are appropriate to your school. There might even be opportunities to do things after school or within the building or things that can really help transform your school based on your advocacy for your topic and what you believe. Become an after school club. Um, you could create a survey. You could learn about Something online like tools or some of you have used it. Maybe you create an online survey that you share with teachers in your whole district if you, uh, you know, have your teacher's help and permission or with parents. Um, you can create advocacy questions that you share with others beyond just the people you talk with. We hope that you use this as a time to be in a conversation, but a survey could be a, another version of that. And then Roz and I think that after you do this initial conversation advocacy, you then will have gathered a lot of information with other adults from teachers that you've talked with that then you could, if you wanted to, create some sort of project around it. You could make posters, you could create um, a, a tip sheet on how to do whatever that thing is. You could- um, Another good thing too, using technology, you could really do that digitally as well. Think right, of all the cool things you could do to share. Blog about it, make an infographic, you're right. So what we hope you think about with a project like this, and this is just one version of advocacy, is that you can start with your own experience. What is it like to be a middle school student? What do you wish were different? Pick a topic, really think and write about what that topic's meant to you, your experiences with it, what you wish were different, things you wish teachers would do differently, and then develop some question starters, some conversation starters that you then can advocate through conversation first, that hopefully then leads to a project as well. So um, we just want to thank you for spending your time with us working on this project together. Uh, teachers and students, if you do awesome stuff with this, please share it with us. You can share it at, uh, if you're on Twitter, you can see I put the, the Twitter handle at the Ed Collab. Um, teachers, you also can visit us at theeducatorcollaborative.com. We have a contact page and we'd love to hear from you. In fact, we'd love to share out with other educators some of the great work that you do with this. Um, and then those of you that will see us, uh, that will see you in Atlanta in just a couple of weeks, we can't wait to uh, join your tables and have you uh, lead some, some really challenging conversations with others. Um, so thank you for joining us. Thanks guys.